This is my video podcast thing. It's a legitimate podcast. Um, it's called Work in Progress, where I talk to my friends about the work they do and why they do it, the challenges they face, and all that good stuff. And oh boy, this is going to be a great episode of Work in Progress today. I'm joined by my longtime friend, Mason Groban, a winemaker at Jasper Winery. And uh, we're coming to you from the Barrel Room. Correct, yeah. In Jasper Winery. Yeah. Uh, Mason, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so you are winemaker number one <laughs> at Jasper Winery, <laughs> That's right? That's right, yeah. Um, and Jasper Winery, for anybody who doesn't know, it's located in Des Moines, Iowa. So we're here in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, when people think about wine and where it's made, Iowa is not their first that def sort of, yeah, definitely you know, not, for sure, place yeah. that comes to mind, right? right? So right. Um, can you tell me kind of the origin story of Jasper Winery? How did it get started? How did you get started uh, making wine? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, as, as you know, Jim, we went together, uh, high school together in Newton, and then um, after high school, I went out to uh, Northern California, got a degree in that UC Davis, a degree, it's called Viticulture and Enology. So that's... Grape, grape growing and wine science and wine science um you know uc davis is kind of the premier school for for the wine production it's about 30 miles outside of napa valley um traveled the world for a while working at different wineries in places like in australia new zealand yeah right um and then uh, came back to kind of run the family winery um, um we were originally in new tin which is jasper county and then well, Hen yeah, hence the name, right, Jasper Winery. Right, and then we moved to this location um, about 15 years ago. Man. So yeah. this is actually our 20th vintage making wine. So we actually Whoa, really? have wine in a bottle that says 2003 on it. Oh, awesome. So, and this is obviously our, our we, this will be our upcoming 20th vintage making wine. So, wow, congratulations. I didn't you. realize it was uh, year 20. Uh, time goes fast, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so interesting path for you too you were you not originally going to be a winemaker because you didn't start right yeah good there. good memory jim yeah. good memory i originally went to school at wake forest in north carolina right um you know was was studying philosophy and yeah. reading a lot of books yeah and then my, <laughs> uh, my dad said uh you know we gotta maybe find a little more directed career path yeah and at that point you know i think i just wanted to move to california <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i would uh really uh, into that and uh uh, but yeah, did, did eventually get into the wine stuff, so yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting, you know, people finish high school and they start college or university and they're maybe sometimes expected to know what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. But I mean, how can you, yeah. you know, 18, 19 years old, it's, uh, it's a big decision, it's a it, weighty decision. It, it is, so, yeah, yeah. For, at that age for sure, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you've been with Jasper Winery for, wait, how long have you been a winemaker? Well, you know, the first few years when we were just going, I would, you know, like I said, I would, I would, I would go abroad work and then come back and help, yeah. help kind of the family get the wine made and yeah. go abroad again. Um, so it was when, about when, when we decided to move in, when I, about 15 years ago, when I came back permanently, that's what I was like, if I'm going to move back to Iowa, we're going to move this thing into Des Moines. And so that's kind of yeah. when I became like, you know, the full-time winemaker here. Okay, right on. Right, so. because our uh, hometown of Newton, Iowa, was quite a small place, and yeah. it's not the most ideal place for a young go-getter right. to live. Maybe. But it's right. a lovely, uh, yeah. lovely little town, yeah. home of Maytag Corporation, <laughs> for, for, former home, former home of, <laughs> and uh, yeah, other great companies and. Um, and lovely people. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, you know, at that time, you know, Des Moines was kind of experiencing a resurgence, you know? Yeah. And so we, it, was, it was kind of like, we'll come back and be kind of uh, part of this resurgence and kind of exciting stuff that's uh, in, happening in Des Moines. And, you know, Des Moines come a long way. Um, yeah, for know, sure. If, even in that, you know, in that time where, um, you know, being part of the community here is pretty cool. So. Yeah, Jasper Winery is a big part of that resurgence, right? Because uh, one of the events that you guys do annually, uh, and I attended earlier in the summer, is uh, the Thursday Thursday night concert series, yep, right? Yep. So tell me about that series and what that. Yeah, so we started that probably you know 12, 13 years ago. That's on Thursday nights, um, uh, Thursday evening, six to nine. It's a free show. And you kind of bring your lawn chair or your blanket and you sit out on the lawn, and we got burgers and brats yeah. and. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, you just listen to live music. Um, local you know, bands? Yeah, local bands, some regional bands. Um, you know, we started pretty small, but we kept it simple and it's grown into a pretty good size event these days, so. Well, I was really happy to see what a draw it was and um, I think what a, like, what a fantastic thing it is for Des Moines. Thank you. I was just so impressed with the, the turnout, the music was good. You know, yeah, when I came, uh, it was a month, maybe six weeks ago, yep. uh, but it was perfect. The yeah. weather was perfect, the music right. was good, the yeah. food was great, yep. and uh, I had a couple of beers, and actually I had uh, ciders, yep. um, which, this is Jasper Winery Cider, right? Right. Yep. And new? Yeah, new, new product for us, just came out at the beginning of the summer, just a couple months ago for us. Um, so yeah, we have three flavors of hard cider, and uh, yeah, it's kind of the, Exciting new thing for us. This is a uh, green apple and honey that I'm drinking. Seven percent alcohol, not yeah. messing around. Right, right, right. What flavor do you have? I have the passion fruit pineapple, and then we add some galaxy hops to this to kind of give it a hoppy flavor. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, but there are no hops in this one. That's no. just a, yeah, just okay. just just as just as flavor. Yeah. All right. This is yeah. this new this year. Yeah, yeah. All all three of them are. Well, cheers. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you. When did you decide to um, jump into the hard cider? Yeah, you know, about a year ago, I was kind of looking to a new project and uh, uh, kind of dawned on me that our license allows us to make hard cider. Um, we actually bought some property next door and uh, we planted uh, 320 apple trees this spring. Yeah, um, so we got Johnny Appleseed. Right. right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got pretty into the whole hard cider and all the apples and uh, all these like heritage apple varieties that we have growing over there, yeah. kind of geeked out on that, which is I think pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we have uh, about eight different varieties of apples grown over there. Um, it'll be a few years till we'll, we'll have anything to harvest over there. Um, but that's kind of the next new thing for Jasper is a cider and a, uh, essentially building a cider house next door. So a cider house, yeah. So what what does a cider house? look like well it, here's the thing Jim is that you know yeah we you know we make the wine we do the ciders around here but you know a, a big part of uh, our business from a revenue standpoint is going to be our events and stuff like that yeah, sure. right you know we you know the Thursday night concerts but you know weddings I'll be honest that's what yeah, you, know, right. you know that's where we do a lot of our business do a lot of corporate events and stuff like that so if we do, if and when we do the cider house next door, it would just be like a second event venue over there. Oh, okay. Where you know it would be kind of like a rust. You know, this is kind of like the fancy urban modern winery. Then you'd go next door. It'd be kind of like the rustic kind of farmhousey kind of cider house feel. Senior pictures. I bet there's going to yeah. be some senior pictures. <laughs> right, there, right. You know, like yeah, it's wedding a, photos. Yeah, it was like the, you know the wood wood exterior that kind of stuff. You hey? know. Will there be any hay? <laughs> Probably like during uh, during harvest time, okay, you know, yeah, like do like a harvest fest with the hay and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So it'd be kind of a different vibe over there, but again, it'd be kind of a cool like a like event space. Um, a lot of times, you know, we're uh, we're booked here. It'd be it'd be nice to have like a different option to offer people. So oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's a this is a winery. It's a vineyard, and I guess apple orchard right. coming up. So it's a, yeah, it's a beautiful pastoral area so ideal yeah. for events and weddings and yeah. um yeah. and that sort of thing so i can see how that would be a big money maker for you guys well yeah it'd be something fun yeah well tell me about some of the uh so you've got three ciders yeah these are new yep. this year yep um tell me about some of the wines that you sell what, so, what, tell me about the original. The, the, the original lineup was like yeah, three, yeah. We started with like four original wines. Um, you know, is it, is you know kind of how you started. So he, you know, growing grapes here in Iowa, we can't grow the same grape varieties that you would grow in like California, right? Yeah. So you can't grow Cabernet, you can't grow Chardonnay here. So we grow what are called French American hybrids, and they're yeah. varieties that are bred to withstand the cold temperatures that we have. So we grow grapes like Chancellor and Marquette and Edelweiss and Save All Blanc. Um, you can use these varieties to to make dry wine, sweet wines. You know, you know, style similar that you would make in California, but uh, yeah, they're just different grape varieties. Um, so yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, we, we now probably make like twenty different uh, twenty different wines, um, anywhere from yeah, red, white, dry to sweet, and across the board. So nice. Yeah. So when you have. Uh an idea for a new product like a cider. Mm -hmm. You said you kind of got the idea last year, mm -hmm. right? So from you know conception of the idea to 
the, when, you know, the, the delivery, when you get to the point where you're actually, you're making it, producing it, sure. canning it or bottling it or whatever, how long does that typically take? I mean, it kind of depends. When you, you know, it's, when you're launching a new brand like this, the, the, honestly, the, you know, there's two main things. First, you, you get to decide what flavors you want to launch with, right? Yeah. So that requires, you know, trying a lot of cider, right? And we did try a lot of ciders, uh, you know, tough part of the research, job. Right? Yeah, research, right? Tough part of the job. Um, and then figure out what flavors you want to start with. And then, and then uh, getting your design done is a big part, getting your brand established, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't want really to have the money to work with like a big design firm. So I yeah. just have like a freelance guy that I work with. So we work pretty closely, you know, um, to getting all, getting, you know, first you're going to start with your logo, you know, yeah. you probably started with 10 different logo designs. Then you're going to, you know, figure out your kind of your color schemes and then your overall branding and then your can layout. And that, that took about three months of back and forth, you know, um, sure. to get that done. And then yeah. you got to figure out, uh, you know, where you're going to get your cans printed, that kind of stuff. And then get your recipes locked in, where you're going to get your flavorings and where you're going to get your raw materials, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's probably like six months start to finish mm. to kind of launch a new product. I'd say it's about right. It, it almost seems fast to me, you know, six months for it. Because it's a big, you know, it's a big undertaking. Yeah. Uh, just, it, it, only because I already really have all the equipment in place, right? Sure. You know, we're yeah. pretty we're, we're really pretty well set up to to do something like this. If, yeah, if you were starting from overall scratch, right? You'd probably take a couple of years. So. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. The uh, yeah, the labels, the branding—that's such a big part of like wine yeah. and yeah. craft beer now For too, sure. right? And things like ciders, right? Because um, you know, they say you can't judge a book by its cover, right? But yeah. a lot of people judge wines that oh, way, I feel like. Sure. When they're shopping, you know, in the wine aisle, and they're like, oh, this one looks interesting because I like the picture right. or whatever yeah. uh, jumps out, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very important, but yeah. I think uh, the Jasper branding is really well done. Well, thank you, appreciate yeah. that. Definitely so cool. have you stuck, have you used a few different people over the yeah i have we've i've worked with some bigger expensive agencies <laughs> yeah. you know um advantages and disadvantages just like anything you know yeah. um they, they do some good work but some of these guys are expensive um um and i've gone back just to working with this freelance guy um just for cost reasons, and I personally, I like being involved in the design process, you know? Yeah, you know? yeah. And then it's like, you can pay these big designers, but they got, you know, this This is my life, right? right. I, you know, and I, I, I've, I've, I've traveled, I know, you know, so I, I, I feel like, you know, I can really, you know, really get exactly the end result that I want, I guess. Oh, for sure. Whereas if you work with a big guy, you get to kind of throw you out, and if you don't like it, there's nothing you can do about it. And you, your money goes oh. down the drain. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, quickly. <laughs> yeah. Quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got a good, you've got a good eye for uh, design and uh, you know, and style. I, I complimented <laughs> you on your shirt earlier. It's a, that's a great shirt. Uh, well, let me ask you about the barrels that okay. are behind us here. Yeah. So these are wine barrels, right? Is there actually wine in here? Yeah, yeah. These are all full right now. So if I wanted to, I could just. Poke right, a hole yeah, right yeah, in there, yeah, wine would shoot flying out. right out. Yeah, you can see. Look, let's tag here. This has got some Chancellor in it. It looks like. Okay. So this is going to be wine from um, last year's harvest. Okay. Uh -huh. So this has been sitting in the barrel for since probably like last November or so. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much ready to go out. Um, and then basically, um, we'll start picking the 2000. You know, we're sitting here on August 9th, I believe it is. Yeah. We'll start picking grapes this harvest season in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then once we once these grapes get picked, we'll pull this this wine out and put the new stuff in. It's kind of how we do it. Oh, right. That. And then this gets bottled. Yep. Um, what about the barrels themselves? What kind of wood is this? So there's going to be two different kinds of wood. We use either French or French or American oak. Yep. Um, French oak's going to get you a little bit more like vanilla character. American yep. oak's going to get you a little bit more spice character. And so what you'll do is say, if you have a lot of, uh, you know, 
one particular batch of wine will be, let's say, these six barrels, right? Yeah. So you maybe you put half in a French oak, half in American oak. So you pick up some different flavors, some in some new oak barrels, some in some older oak barrels. There's different toast levels. And then what you'll do, those are kind of your winemaking tools, you know, to get your, get your flavor. And then these six barrels will be all blended back together into a tank. Uh, prior to bottling, and then that's how you kind of get your different complex flavors. Yeah, a lot of complexity in there with all that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and let's run through some vocabulary that that you know you could give me to help me pretend like I know something about wine. Because I, I, I you know, be honest, I've drank a lot of wine yeah. over the years, but uh, you know, describing it uh, both in like in terms of taste and all the different flavors and complexity just the whole vocabulary of it mm -hmm. still kind of eludes me yeah it's people like to try to make it harder than it is if yeah. it sounds smart you know <laughs> but some people are really good at it yeah right? for sure for sure uh, but there's um so if you're describing a wine what do you need to talk about well obviously the first thing is going to be the aroma right you're trying yep. a wine you're going to try the aroma yep. you know is it you know more fruit forward kind of jammy oakier yep. with a white wine is it kind of fresh or is it gonna, again it's going to be oakier right mm -hmm. and you get a look at a wine and then is, is it you know uh you know what is it you know what's the color is it you know, clear or dark that kind of stuff and then obviously tasting it tasting for flavors mouthfeel how tannin is it how astringent is it? Yeah. Um, you know, which is kind of how bitey it is. And tannin, what is tannin? Tannin, I like, it's, it's hard to describe. Tannin is like, uh, a good way to describe tannin is, is it's just, when you're drinking the difference between straight water or drinking tea, it's like that, it's just kind of that bitiness in your mouth, yeah, okay. you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, but that's kind of the best way to describe it, right? Okay. It's like that drying sensation in your mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of the best way to describe it. Okay, so you got your, uh, the aroma, the appearance, and then the... Mouthfeel. Uh, the mouthfeel. And then flavor, yeah. And the flavor. So flavors yeah. could include like fruity, jammy. Right. And then Citrus, little, you know, for a yeah. white, citrusy, floral, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Vanilla. Right, yeah. Yeah. Licorice. Right, yeah, you get a little black licorice in some of the uh, dry reds these days. Yeah. yeah. Anise flavors. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know how sweet it is, you know? Um, sweetness level, we do make a lot of sweeter, oh, sure. sweeter wines here in, here in the Midwest. Yeah. People like a lot of sweeter wines, so that's definitely a big thing. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. Describing wine, it's like it's like uh, analyzing a, a, a picture or something in a yeah. way, right? Sometimes yeah. it can be kind of just subjective, and, yeah. and some people are kind of full of it, I think, when they're yeah. uh, describing it, too. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the younger generation, they're kind of getting away from that, right? Nobody, you know, it's like nobody really likes the snooty wine guy anymore, yeah. you know? Um, you know, our... our um, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're, from a business standpoint, you know, we're seeing the most growth in like canned wine. Not only do we do, we do the uh, canned cider, but we just do canned wine. Oh yeah. Um, and that's, it's just, you know, people just want something simple and fun. They don't want to have to overanalyze it. You know, there's, there's definitely a time where you want like a very like nice complex wine, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of occasions where you just you just want to have something that's easy to drink and yeah for sure you know um, especially if you're at i imagine it's really good for other events around the city like i mean i don't have any that you know are jumping out at me but like big uh, city concerts or things yeah. like that it's kind of a can of wine is almost yeah. like the perfect thing to take to that right? yeah 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 some of the music festivals around town we sell pretty well at and yeah, yeah it's just it's just easy yeah Sure. Um, okay, and it doesn't break, you know? Well, that's the thing. Easily recyclable, yeah, it doesn't break, you have know, broken glass. There's a, honestly a lot of advantages with the cans. Yeah. Well, let me ask you another barrel question, because okay. I, I meant to ask this earlier. So, when you're, when you're finished with a barrel, yeah. you just reuse it, right? You can, you can. Um, 
When you have like a new oak barrel, um, after about five years, you won't get any oak flavor out of that anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just sapped. Yeah. You can still use it for aging, yeah. uh, but you're not getting any oak, oak flavor. Um, we actually have started to just buy used barrels that are like two, two to three year used, mm -hmm. and then just use them one time, and then we just sell the barrels and we're done. And then who buys them? Do they like uh, other alcohol? No, or... we, we will have other alcohol makers that will sell them too, but we just mostly just put them on Craigslist for bucks. Yeah, I'm sure people like having them around. They, they, it would be kind of a cool thing to have, you know, at, on your porch yeah, or exactly. your deck or whatever. So right. a, a lot of it's kind of ornamental after a while, for I assume. Sure. Yeah. The buyers want it for that reason. Yeah, mostly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You could fit a body inside one of these things. <laughs> They're pretty big, you know? <laughs> If I ever need Cut to it out the head, <laughs> right? Bury it down, send it down river. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I ever need to get rid of some money, right. I'm, okay. I'm going to come yeah, to you. But yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah, that'll be a cash deal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I have any other questions for you. Okay. Uh, about Jasper. Anything else you want to throw at me well i mean i i could i i have a couple notes here jim if yeah, you want to you know to give me a, a couple like um you know i don't know what the you know the you know the general direction of this podcast but just like a couple gen general business thoughts that i scratched out before you came in okay? oh okay yeah, business uh, thoughts just um the you know some general lessons very quickly that I've learned um, in 20, 20 years of being an entre oh, entrepreneur. Okay. Perfect. Uh, um, first one I'm going to say is a very difficult lesson that I've learned is I, I ran a craft brewery for ten years. Okay. Yeah. And we shut it down, and it was a very difficult decision. Um, but uh, and you read about this a lot, and it's it's, uh, it's it's the advantages of failure, you know. Oh, is, for sure. Is that um, when you're successful, success is great, but you don't really learn anything, and you can tend to get a big head. And yeah. I kind of did that in the beginning of my career, uh -huh. and I, you know, quite honestly, spent a good ten years in my of my career kind of failing a lot, and it sucks at the time. But I'm at the point now where I have literally made every goddamn mistake that you can make <laughs> that my confidence is so high because there's nothing more I could do. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that failure can lead to confidence. And that's, I never thought I'd end up there, but that's, I think, I think it's a good life lesson to learn. Well, it's a necessary component for success, right? I mean, you have to fail in order to achieve, you know, achieve success. Yeah. 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 So. It's tough. I mean, it's not really fun to experience it, right? right? But right. Uh, long term, it, it pays off. Yeah. The more you fail, the better you get, right? You do. Yeah. You do. Uh, yeah. You never think you're, you know, when you're 20 years old coming out of high school, you never, you know, you just think, I'm going to rocket to the moon, yeah. right? But that's not the way. But, you know, once, you, once, you hit your, once we've hit our 40s, you know, you, you had some failures, but you've learned so much. Uh, it, it really, you know, it puts you in a good position to, I feel, to succeed later in life. Um, another thing is, is obviously, um, I've learned that you got to have persistence in business. Uh -huh. um, you, you got to, you got to persist. But at the same point, you got to know when to quit. You got to know when to, you know, to get out because yeah. you just can't, you just can't keep hitting your head against it because there's other, there's other, always gonna be other opportunities out there. Uh, so that's another good lesson I've learned. Um, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons in running a small business. I love running a small business. Um, it's, it, it's, it's fun for me if I get to do something different every day. You know, one time I'm, I'm you know, I'm doing production work. The other time I'm doing my counting kind of stuff. And every, every day uh, gets, gets actually different. Um, stomping grapes yeah. every now and then. All, all, yeah. All, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll be stomping a lot of grapes for the, the next few months. Yeah. Um, but I've also learned that in... In any business, you get what there's something that's called the blue ocean theory, and that's what you got to find. You got to find a you got to find a niche that nobody else is doing, right? Yeah. You can't keep trying to do whatever. You got to you got to you got to do something different. If you know, at the beginning of my industry, I was, when I, in my career, I was like, what are other people doing? Then I'll do the same, right? Yeah. That's not how it works. If you want to achieve big success, right? If you want to just be like another, you know, okay, you're doing the same thing, fine. But if you 
if you really want to break out, you got to you got to think for yourself, create something new, and you know make do something that's different and get ahead. Otherwise, you you just you're never going to get ahead in this game or any game. Yeah. In my opinion, these are all in my opinion, Jim. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. But well, they're lessons that you've learned. The lessons right? I've learned. So, yeah. So you're never going to really stand out, I suppose. So you got to find that gap in the market. You have to if you want to really create a, a meaningful brand. A brand right? and a, a me- meaningful career. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then my the last thing is, um, uh, like I said, like I, I ran this brewery. You know, competing against all these other breweries, right? Um, they decided to get out of that game, but now all these breweries, they, 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 they have our wine in their tap rooms, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's nothing more satisfying for, uh, from turning competitors into customers. Yeah. And so that's been kind of a really rewarding thing, which is kind of like thinking outside the box. So. Rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the, yeah, my last thing I was, I, I didn't write this one down, but yeah, you know, they always say, oh, but you gotta, you gotta follow your, follow your heart, just do what you love and the money will come. Yes. But you, in my opinion, you also have to, you, do what you love, but you also got to find a way to make money. But yeah. if you're not making money, you're not in business, you yeah. know? And yeah. that's just, I think- It's a, I, like a hobby. It is a hobby. And I think like you and I, Jim, we're kind of romantic guys. We're not like money chasers. We're just not, you know? Um, because for us, it's more about the experience of life, I feel like, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I've, I've always been that way, but I've, as I've gotten older, I again, yes, you want to experience life, but you got to make sure that you're making money. To, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you're not, you know, that's what kind of facilitates it all, so. Yeah, I, t- I totally agree. You're right that uh, I, you and I share that quality where, like, I don't think either of us are motivated by money. No. But of course, we need it to, to, do uh, to the, survive to and do to the, be in business. To and, do the things that we want to do. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a necessity. And it's yeah. nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with right. money. Yeah. But yeah, it's not my primary motivation either. Agreed. Yeah. I would love to win the lottery, though. I, I did. <laughs> I checked uh, the Mega Million I know, numbers right? this yeah, morning. Yeah. Again, I did not win. <laughs> I don't know. All my right. new thing, when I buy a lottery ticket now, which is not frequent but when i buy a ticket uh powerball or whatever yeah i always ask the cashier if i can return it if it doesn't win yeah you know? and like half the time they think it's funny they or at least acknowledge that i made a joke right. you know? um okay well i thank you for sharing those lessons mason yeah, yeah, i think yeah. that that kind of insight from uh, you know, somebody who's in a small business or any, uh, has a lot of experience in business, uh, it, it can be really valuable for people who are starting out. Um, but let me ask you this. What do you know about Canada? Canada? A uh, little bit. Um, Have you ever been? Oh, yeah. I've been. It's been a while. My family used to travel up there. Um, you know, been to Prince Edward's Island. You ever oh, heard yeah. That? Yeah. Uh, one memory I have from back in the day, I think I was driving through, I think, Montreal back in the day and seeing the sex workers on every corner of every block. Oh, okay. It was an interesting... <laughs> That's uh, pretty exciting when you're... Well, it, was just, it was right? just, uh, yeah, it was shocking, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's a little different from right. Newton, Iowa, right? Right, yeah. Uh, they're, they're relegated to you know, <laughs> different areas in Newton. Yeah. Um, okay, so you've been. Yeah. So let's see how you can handle these Canadian trivia questions okay. I have for you. Okay. Don't give me anything too hard, though, Jim. <laughs> okay. I'm no, I'm no expert, but... All right. Well, let's see how you do. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Question one. Screech is an alcohol most closely associated with which Canadian island? <laughs> Screech. Yeah, I've heard of that. I think I remember reading something about... Uh, is, is it Newfoundland? Correct. Nice. Yeah, it is nice. Newfoundland. Nice. Nice. Newfoundland. Uh, All right, nice job. Question two. According to Forbes' 2017 rankings, the second most valuable, second most valuable NHL franchise is Canadian. Mm. What's the name of this Canadian NHL franchise? I think I I do. That's probably the Maple Leafs. Is that right? 
Correct. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, of Toronto, <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leafs. Good. Nice. All right, two for two so far. Moving on to question three here. Question three, called the greatest outdoor show on earth by its promoters. What is the name of the huge annual rodeo held for 10 days every July in Alberta's most populous city? What is the name of their huge annual rodeo? Shit, I'd have to think about that one, Joe. <laughs> um, man, I don't know if I'm gonna know that one. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know that one, Jim. Sorry. Well, you give me a hint. It's in Alberta's most populous city. <laughs> what huh. is the most populous city in Alberta? Alberta. It's not Montreal, huh? No. No. That's Quebec. <laughs> oh, is it Quebec? Ah, uh, shoot. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. I don't got that one. All right. Are you absolutely sure? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, I, before I tell you the answer, okay. I'll give you, a, we'll take a pause on that one. Okay. We'll go on to question four. Yeah, come back to me. Because I think I can see like a little sparkle in your eye where you almost know it. Okay. Yeah, let me think about that one. But let's go on to number four. So okay. question four. So far, We'll say you're two, uh, two for two. Okay, yeah, we'll come back. What country has the longest total coastline in the world? And just to be clear, we're talking about coastline on the border of the country, not including any internal coastlines that include, you know, lakes or rivers. What, yeah. what country? Yeah, yeah, I do know that. That is Canada. Yeah, you are yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is. I think, yeah, I've known that for a long time. Yeah. That's a... <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows that. Well, not everybody, but, yeah. but you certainly do. <laughs> okay, uh, three for three. Okay. All right, question, we'll say question four. Okay. I'm Like a Bird was a top 10 hit single from the 2000 album, Whoa Nelly, the debut album from which Canadian singer-songwriter? Ooh. Is that Nelly Furtado? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go back. So, so far, four for four. Let me give you another chance <laughs> at this final question. We'll see if you can get okay. the answer to this one. So, this was our question three. We'll make it our final question now. Question five. Called the greatest outdoor show on earth mm. by its promoters. Mm -hmm. What? is the name of the huge annual rodeo held for 10 days mm -hmm. every July in Alberta's most populous mm. city. Yeah, I feel like I've seen something about that. Oh, man. I could see it on the tip yeah, of your tongue. Yeah, I feel like I saw an article or saw a show or something. Like you know, the rodeo up there. Is, is it? It's not the Calgary Stampede, is it? <laughs> you is are that correct. It? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Nice job. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Five out of nice. five. See, I knew if I gave you yeah. a little time to let those let those wheels turn, you'd come yeah. back. Well, I appreciate you. appreciate you doing that. Nice job. Me. I think you know more about Canada <laughs> than you uh, than you thought. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Mason, that's all. That's all I got for you. Okay. Today. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for you know being on my on yeah. my podcast. It's called Work in Progress, you cool. know, and um, this is Work in Progress right yeah. here, right? Yeah. Wine in the making and yeah. a winemaker on the move. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you, Jim. Thank you Appreciate for your time. It. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anybody who's out there, you know, if, especially if you're in Iowa, it's on the shelf. Uh, try some Jasper wine, and uh, is, can you buy Jasper wine in? Most of the high, high V's in the Des Moines metro, you can. Yeah. What about in other states? Uh, you can order. Go to our website. You can order it online. We'll ship it out to you. Okay, so it can, you can ship it uh, in the U.S. Can you ship it abroad? Not abroad, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you find it abroad? No. Okay, so, but you in every state. 
Uh, we can ship like 40 states. There's a lot of different hmm. laws with alcohol shipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. Weird, yeah, weird yeah, alcohol yeah. laws. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks again, Mason. All right. It's a pleasure. You. Yeah, likewise. Did you have a good time? I did, yeah. Uh, you gave me some, I think you gave the audience some really good, you know, useful bits of advice. Well, uh -huh. <laughs>